wherever we can as Castaneda just gets hurtled, but it's fine. We got several guys back there with an RPO option to the outside. We'll get it out to Chuba. He gets some space and Callaway has the throwing touchdown. Line blocking all around as they go with the weak side dive and in. As we get the blitz, it's thrown out and Gardner Johnson, I don't know what he was doing, but Cole Komet is trying to sprint away and he will actually end up working. Instead, across the middle, we have Thomas. Touchdown to take the lead. As it steps up right down the middle here, that's gonna be Joshua Dobbs who fumbles it. Throw yet again to the outside. That is Moore who shook the tackle. We've got some options downfield, but the ball pops out. Winters, you've got to pay attention. Big on big. They go with a toss to the outside. We got to flow to it, and Stockton flows too late. As we start once again with that fullback dive, and he cuffs it up. And aggressiveness as Hodgins missed the sack. Owe misses, and Fields gets the touchdown. Are you kidding me? as it will be for Madison Boston, the rookie. Should see what opens up for him downfield as it's Newsom. He gets the pick. We had our fair share of trouble on offense. Turnovers were a problem, but that is now two losses to start the season. And following what was a very interesting game for us, a lot of intrigue around it brought in obviously the pastronaut and it was fun putting together that offense because obviously we didn't want to rely too much on Joshua Dobbs because it was his first game with us, came in that week. So we put a couple other players in a couple different spots. We did use a new playbook last time. It was the Saints playbook. And we're going to continue with that today. See how well that works, but it's going to be up against a much tougher competition than what we just faced against the Bears. As today, we play against... The Ravens, the Mar Jackson, a 99 overall, though the scouting report isn't saying that he's scrambling that much. We obviously know that he can 97 speed. That's definitely something we'll need to keep in the back of our minds. As for running back, they have a rookie in Chauncey Jackson out of Oklahoma State, and he's a 76. They also still have J.K. Dobbins, but they're rocking with the day one starter tag with the rookie. As for receiver Zay Flowers, their top guy, he's progressed well throughout this series, up to a 91. Then you're going to have a pretty steep drop to the next couple. You have James Gonzalez, third-year receiver out of Oregon State. Terrence Marshall, we did not keep him around. We just had too many receivers, and now we'll be playing against him today. And then we round out with A.T. Perry, a former guy from our division with the Saints, now finding himself at home here with the Ravens. As for tight end, they still have Mark Andrews, fantastic tight end, 94 overall. Cade Otten also joins them, another guy from a former division rival from the Buccaneers, now finding his spot there as tight end two. And then they have Dion Kitchen. So all in all, a pretty solid tight end group. Getting to the line, Ronnie Stanley, an 89, great start at left tackle. 78, John Simpson at left guard. 88, Tyler Linderbaum at center. Getting to the right side, Cody Ford looking like the weaker side with that being a 73. And then a 74 rookie in Roy Carmen. So hopefully today we get our left ends going which we'll talk about shortly. As for their defensive line, they do have Justin Matabuke. I believe that's how that's pronounced, an 87. Over at the right side, Dwayne Benedict, third-year player out of UCF. Down the middle, Travis Jones, a 79. And then they're down into the 60s with their backups there. Outside rush, they're going to have Jimenez, 73. They also have Robinson, a 72. We could probably see both of those. Opposite side, Ojabo is 79. And Harold probably won't see too much of him. Down the middle, Roquan Smith. We've got to make sure we just block him well, but they also have Patrick Queen. So both guys have speed. Hopefully they don't wreck the running game for us, both inside and outside, because that's what we're going to rely on today. They also have a rookie in Lawrence Drummond, who looks like he could be pretty promising for the future. As for the DBs, Marlon Humphrey, 94. Trey McPhee, second-year player out of Michigan. And then DeMar Clements, 
third year player out of Wake Forest. Free safety, Marcus Williams, an 87, though they also have Brian Gross, a second year player out of USF, who should see some playing time. And then over at Strong, they are going with a future starter here in Niles Session, when they could start that second year player out of UCF in Gross, but for some reason, they're going with Session. We'll see how well that ends up working out, but Strong Safety might need to be a spot we attack. But as for our own roster right now, we are beaten up. If you've seen every episode this season so far, you know that we've been racking up big injuries. The end of last episode, we took down the injury rating from 25 to 20. So hopefully that will help us out a little bit. We're obviously going to be without Bryce Young. We are also out Jedrick Wills Jr., one of our starting offensive tackles. And I don't trust the depth that we have there to start in the next three games. So I do want to make a signing there. We're also missing our top two edge rushers and Tyler Edwards, the first round. He's been out ever since the preseason. So this is a very beaten up team. The Ravens, for the most part, pretty healthy. A back strain from Kyle Hamilton is why they are starting the lower overall strong safety. So hopefully we can figure out some things to get this offense moving against a great defense and a pretty good offense. And to help us out, as mentioned, I do want to make a signing for our offensive line, and I want to sign Andrew Wiley. There was also a Luminor. I just think Wiley is, is a little bit more of a balanced tackle here for us. He's 32. It's a one-year stopgap, 74 overall. But he has the power with a little bit of finesse for the running game, and I wanted to make sure we brought in someone who has some good run blocking because that's what we're going to rely a little bit more on whenever Bryce Young is out. So Andrew Wiley should slot in pretty well here for us. Now getting towards the defensive line where we are pretty light, there is an interesting player to pick up here in Joseph Osai. He's 26. He is a power rusher. That's something we we're looking for. He does not bring much of any finesse or block shedding, but he has speed and acceleration, some strength. I think we need to bring in depth for the next few weeks. And if he plays well, he can take a spot on roster. So we're gonna be actually signing two different players. Now to make room for those two players, we've gotta cut a couple people. And the first is gonna be second year offensive guard, Brian Tate. He just is not very well developed. He has the good run block rating to start off, has a little bit of the power, but everything else is mid 60s. And we've got better backups. So we will be releasing Tate. Now for the defensive line, we could, go to release an edge, but right now I wanna have at least two guys at each spot with Owe as well as McCullough both out. We only have two at each spot. So where we have more guys than what we need is gonna be at defensive tackle. We brought in Ika through a trade, I think it was last year, but he just does not have a path to any playing time right now. He has some decent ratings. Hopefully he could find himself a spot on another team, but we will be releasing him. Now with all of those moves done, we are ready to jump into this Baltimore Ravens game and in a game that we could really use a win. One and two, you would hate to go through the first quarter of the season with only one win. This would be a massive win, but we always seem to play to the level of our competition. So let's see just how well we turn things up. Let's get this rain game underway as Tucker boots us off. We got Murray back to return and return. He will try to find the gap, though it closes as soon as he arrives up at the 25. For the offense, the pasture not to lead us on out. And to be honest, I was a little bit disappointed in his first game, not how he played. Two touchdowns, 200 yards. I was disappointed in the lack of puns that I used as the ball pops out. It's an immediate fumble on the first carry for Chuba Hubbard. The Ravens jump on it. And without giving up a touchdown on the first play, that's about as worse or as bad as it could possibly be to start a game. The Ravens head out. They look for a pass play one across the middle. We get a big hit, but it actually sends the receiver to the outside and they score. James Gonzalez, rocking 20, bounces off the tackle and takes the lead. 
Well, there's really not a worse way to start the game. They capitalize off the fumble. And now our offense right back out there after two plays of all that just went bad. We get Chuba Hubbard to the outside, and he will pick up the first, more importantly, holding on to it. And honestly, you could save the antics there at the end for after we get several big plays, Hubbard. First and 10 at the 36. Look for a little bit of a play action pass. Just need to find something coming across the middle. We find Bateman in his return game, but it's through his hands. Honestly, it's looking like we've never played in the elements whatsoever. As we look for the halfback screen, we get it to the outside with some space. Hubbard with another first and bumped out by McPhee. So if we could just stop beating ourselves here. We could clearly move the ball here. Dobbs back in shotgun. As we look for a tight end coming across, that's Boston who holds on to it. The rookie gets us down to the 23. Now he had a little bit of a slow start this season, but the last couple games he's definitely picked things up as we have a couple deeper options, a couple options sitting underneath which we try to get one out to Faust. That is another rookie, slips one tackle down inside the 10, kept the legs moving down to the six. He's just a big body target. We could try to get going out in some space. As we have an RPO dialed up here, we could either hand it off or get it to the outside with Bateman. We also have Faust as an option, as we will stick it off to with Hubbard and he can easily jock into the end zone. That gap wide open and we quickly capitalize off our early mistakes. Now let's just try to keep that momentum going on defense as Lamar Jackson and the Ravens take the field. Only one play they scored last time. Setting up the halfback screen, we get the sack, the linebackers right down the middle. Now definitely not trying to talk too soon, but we have a lot of speed on this defense, so we should do better in guarding the possible running of Jackson as they handed off Dobbins, counted as a TFL for Osai. Or honestly, I'm probably mispronouncing it just as I mispronounce a lot of things. Just found out that I was mispronouncing Duggan. I was calling him Dugan as the right tackle moves early. Well, luckily for me, at least, I don't have to worry about Dugan's or Duggan's name being pronounced correctly because now he's our backup once again. As it's third and long, they're going deep downfield and Newsom takes it away. Gets that second foot down. We take over at the 28. So it would seem both teams having trouble with what is honestly some fairly light looking rain early on in this one. Guess both teams just regularly practice indoors, just not prepared as that pass just off for Boston. Now we know Dobbs doesn't have the best accuracies deeper downfield, but you expect him to be a little bit closer to that one. Second and 10, look for a run down the middle. Hubbard cuts right, we'll pick up six. Now the real question is how much quarterback running can we get away with against the Ravens defense? Practicing against Lamar Jackson. It is third and four, and it was read beautifully, and Joshua Dobbs a little bit shaken up as he stood up. He heads to the bench. So apparently it's a good thing that I now know Dugan is actually pronounced Duggan, because he might be heading out our next possession. As for now, we will take the field goal lead. Hopefully... That doesn't end up being the case that Dugan does have to come out, but we'll be prepared as the Ravens offense comes up for their next possession and they go over the top finding Andrews. A little bit of a cheap shot at the end of that play, to be honest. But the refs don't end up throwing anything. Not that that doesn't mean that we won't be getting a fine in the mail. First and 10 as they motion the receiver over. They do go with the jet sweep. That's Flowers who will turn it into a wide receiver dive, picking up one. That's always been a important part of this defense is the speed that we have spread around. We don't allow guys to really just run by us, though we might allow sloppy tackling as we do there. Jackson scores, not Lamar, Chauncey, the rookie running back. And it's really just been big play or nothing for the Ravens offense. As our offense heads out, they've had at least one solid possession and Dobbs is coming back out. Word is some lower back strains, so we'll need to be careful with him throughout the remainder of this game. And that really just comes down to needing to keep him clean. 
So let's try to do that as we have a pistol set here. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Looking for a throw. We got Boston out in the flats. We will find him with a short gain of three. That is back-to-back -back plays where we've seen that strong safety. I was saying maybe shouldn't have been starting. Actually make some plays here. We got third and long. Looking for a little bit of some play action. Boston was open downfield, but no time for Dobbs to throw it. We will have to punt. And it was most certainly not a good punt. The ball made it 13 yards, bounced back a little bit, but then was returned. So they're starting in plus territory as there's a great play from Stockton and even more impressive, no DPI call. That was a big issue for this defense last year. We could not touch receivers, no matter if the ball made it there first or not. As they go back to their other tight end, that time Andrews will pick up eight. And if we're going to be bringing blitzes, we just have to make sure that Lamar isn't just diming us like that play. As they go back down the middle, Jackson a quick stop that time, but he still picks up the first. So we'll definitely need to do our best defensively today to try to move around our looks, do a little bit more than what we normally do, which is primarily just man coverage. And hopefully that'll do enough to keep Lamar not necessarily guessing, but guessing. As we end the first quarter here, the Ravens are down to the 22 with a four-point lead, looking to widen it. But if we could show up with a little bit of some pass rush here, that would be great. As it's second and one, delayed blitz, and they find their touchdown in Andrews, sitting in a gap of the zones with three different defenders around him. He still makes the way to the end zone. Well, it's definitely been a mixed start to this game, and we need to find some ways to turn it up quickly. As we're going to start with a little bit of some Wildcat here. Fake it, get Chuba Hubbard back to the outside, try to pick up some blocks. Not going to get a juke by that safety, and now Chuba is injured. Luckily, it doesn't seem to be major, but he is in some discomfort. But apparently does not seem to matter that we lowered that injury slider. We're still seeing the same rate of injuries. They just may not be as big of injuries as we pick up two there with Barry leaving third and inches. So let's just continue trying to get several hands on the ball here as we are going to go with the fullback dive, the rookie in Winters, who loses it. Another fumble on the day. What is that, the third, if not fourth in total today? And I'm pretty sure every fumble has been lost. The Ravens take over, already up 11 in plus territory at the 35. Got two receivers to the left. As they go with a quick stop, they find Otten, slips one tackle, picking up about 10 yards, though just shy of the first. Well, really not sure what we could do about this fumbling problem. We haven't had that be an issue for this team, really the, at all this series, as the Ravens do pick up the first down here to the 24. That time, the former Panther in Terrence Marshall gets the catch. First and 10, and early movement again looks like on the right guard. We'll back him up. So just about for every fumble we have, they will have a false start. Doesn't exactly uh, equate to the same as his first and 15. They go back out for Andrews once again, finding the soft spot in the coverage. Well, it would very much appear that Running zone is not going to work against this team. We're going to go back to strictly man. See how well that works. Great stop there, Gardner Johnson. And we really need to see a lot more of that from him as he is on the hot seat. He, that's a spot that we considered making a trade for as we have Mingo just sitting on roster as Victor sent the end zone trip as they find Flowers to widen their lead. Well, already today, this is feeling like we're at the point where we've got to make something happen. Otherwise, this game could get out of hand. Luckily, Chuba Hubbard back out there trying to fight through some pain just as our quarterback is as we go to Hubbard. A great play from 32. Hurdled the block and got the quick stop. That is Marcus Williams. Kept what should have been a really good gain to just four yards. Second and six, we keep it the same look here. Going to send Bateman in motion. Got a quick stop from him, or we can go with the drag route instead to Chenault. Good adjustment on the throw. We'll pick up a first down, and that's really what we need right now. Just some simple plays to try to rebuild some 
Momentum, trust in ourselves. We're going to have Chenault go in motion this time. He's going to go on the drag across as we've got to get out and throw it away. Patrick Queen nearly picking up the sack. And after a rough play there, we'll send Dobbs to the sideline. Let him catch his breath. Callaway comes out at quarterback looking for the fullback dive, essentially. He will pick up three. We've just essentially got to find ways to just come up with unique ways to pick up a couple yards. Best way we're going to move as we have our receiver on the back side. Not a good adjustment that time intended for Chenault. Not that it was necessarily a good throw either way, but the offense will stay out on fourth down. Again, feeling the pressure, we've got to find a first down here. Everyone going to go to the right-hand side except for Boston, who had the step, but the ball missed placed again. Will be a turnover on downs, and maybe we should have just punted it. But either way, we make the bed that we lie in. Think that's how it goes? Maybe not. Either way, we <laughs> made the decision, didn't work out, we got to pay the consequences. The gist of that saying, as Andrews has just been fantastic today, holding onto that ball no matter the hit. We've also seen Jackson have a pretty good comeback after his early mistakes as well, as they are currently up 28 to 10 and they're in scoring range. As we send the blitz, doesn't matter, quick out to Andrews. We need tighter coverage on the tight end. That's the safety net. So that might just end up needing to be maybe my job. We'll find out. First and 10, quick, quick across the middle. They actually lose a yard on the catch. Sometimes you just can't go that quickly. That's where mistakes end up cropping up. Not that the Ravens have had too many of those mistakes so far in this one. Just a couple early on, though. They've capitalized off of a lot of mistakes on our part as they find Flowers that time gain of 10. Though that will leave him with the one yard loss on the previous Flowers catch. Third and one. As we send the blitz here, they get it across, and it's none other than Andrews with much more than the one yard needed down to the 10. Well, we knew this one would be difficult. Ravens 3-0 heading into it, but honestly, I feel like we've hurt ourselves more than the Ravens have just outplayed us as <laughs> there's a big hit from Hodgins. That one will definitely ensure Flowers does not bring it in. Second and goal, they got a bunch to the left, one lone to the right. As they will look for a throw off of Otten's shoulders, they had him. Just didn't get that head on a swivel. So on third and ten, we will keep the man coverage ready. As they got two to the left, one to the right. Definitely to make sure Andrews doesn't wreck havoc. As instead, they find the young receiver in Gonzalez. His second touchdown of the day. Well, Houston, we've got ourselves a problem. 47 seconds left in this first half. We are now down by 25 points. Can Dobbs get us down to the end zone prior to the end of this half? Just to keep a little bit of something going here for us, we find Bateman, a big gain up out of bounds, crossing midfield to the 37 without having to use any timeouts. That is the kind of play that we need. We keep with the same look, then flip it. Three to the right, Boston loan to the left. See if he can get the step on the safety or corner. It's tight coverage and just off of his hands. Though I have to say, not a badly placed ball from Dobbs. Not the uh, best arm strength. That was definitely topping out his range. As we go to Chuba Hubbard, who will pick up five. And now Patrick Queen, a little bit shaken up. A possible chest injury. He's going to head to the locker room. And not in a way that I particularly like talking about injuries, but that could definitely help us out. Taking out one of their main guys down the middle as Dobbs. What throw was that? We had Bateman uncovered and he missed him by a country mile. And while we could definitely take the field goal here, I just don't think that would help us really eat into a 25 point deficit. So fourth and five, we need just five yards. Hard count, no one jumps. They send a blitz off the left-hand side. Rolling out, we find that is the rookie in Faust. Quick first down, let's get back to the line quickly here. Actually, we'll call a timeout as we did not manage that clock very well there. I was hoping for more of a seven second runoff. Instead, it was about 15 seconds ran off. So we have eight seconds left. 
Time for a couple more plays here. Faust might be a good option depending on the safety over the top. Look for a one-on-one, -on -one, though the hit definitely sent that back shoulder too far to the sidelines. Four seconds. Have time for one more shot towards the end zone, then probably got to take out the field goal unit. Want to come away with at least some points here. Going over the top, it's Bateman, and he's bumped. And we did not conserve enough time. We come away with nothing there to end the half. We did not manage that well at all. And we left some points out on the board. At least six in total that first half. We went for it on one fourth down. We could have taken the field goal, went for it on that second one, and ended up getting nothing. So mistakes from the coaching as well as the players in that first half. Looking around the league though, Falcons, they have started off great this year and that is looking to continue as they're up 21-3 on the Chargers. As for the Giants, not necessarily tied to us, but never know. They are currently down to the Colts, 14-3. Both teams looking for their second win on the season. As for our last update, a big one here for the division. The Saints, they dominate against the Buccaneers, 28-7, getting their first win on the season. So if we lose, they might jump us in division. And unless we could get some big plays going this second half, that might just be where we are headed. Ravens start with the ball up 25 points. As they look for a run to the outside, they will get the outside. St. Juiced not going to get the tackle. First down for Jackson, game of 12. And as mentioned, we just got to find ways to get those turnovers. Some sacks as well could help. Just something to start to build a little bit of some momentum as we get the TFL there. Cash came crashing in. Ended up needing to help clean up Victor's tackle, leaving them with second and 11. They got a bunch to the left-hand side. Tight end and Andrews coming across. They will check down to Jackson, and it will be a shorter gain, about three yards. But it's plays like this that we've got to have. Third and eight need to get off the field here without giving up any points this drive. As Jackson will look to scramble, and he will do just that, picking up the first down. That's just the problem you're going to run into against the Ravens with the amount of talent they have at every position. Makes it difficult to try to uh, line up against everything. But at least uh, outside of a couple runs today, we've done mostly well against the running game, the true running game. Second and ten, they look to go back to it, and another quick stop that time is Hodgins. But it's third down once again where we need the stop they got trips to the right hand side one loan to the left as they get the quick curl though through the hands of flowers we will force that stop at the 45 that should just be outside of tucker's range though he is wanting to test it as there's been talk about a new kicker in this league cole ford being better than tucker well he's gonna challenge him here and it is no good wide right tucker missed the 62, 63 yard field goal. And while there is certainly a part of me that would love to also try a 62 or 63 yard field goal to prove our guy is better, we need some touchdowns and we need them quickly. Chuba Hubbard starts us off with a gain of four and we're gonna be starting essentially in hurry up offense here. We've got a lot of ground to make up and frankly not a whole lot of time to do it as Dobbs, don't throw it straight to the defense. Luckily, the guy that was covering there, I'm pretty sure, is a true edge rusher, so it ends up not biting us too much, but still. Setting up the halfback screen, got some blockers out in front. A big block from Clifton D. Cleeter as we scamper up out of bounds. A flag comes in late, and they will finally call that late hit this time on session. Well, that works out for us. Gets us down to the 12 as we have three over to the right-hand side. Bateman to the left. I'm sure he would love a touchdown against his former team. It was open for either the tight end as well as Bateman, but no time to throw. The line hasn't done a tremendous job of holding up for a decent amount of time today. Second and 10, we look to go to the running game. Nice juke there from Hubbard, and he will pick up seven. Maybe if he was able to get that last juke, it's a touchdown. Either way, it's a good gain. We got two to the right, one to the left. Split backfield here as both the running backs check in. Needing to find a touchdown here. Coming across, it's Bateman who does get to it. The ball looked like it was going to be too far out in front. 
but Bateman will get one in his revenge game. Now we just need to do that a few more times while getting stops on defense. They start back at the 23 as they get the ball out to Jackson, who spins but keeps his feet past a couple diving defenders before St. Juice finally drags him down. They flip the field. Just a second too late on the first step there from the linebacker. Supposed to be man-on-man -man coverage. Sent him quickly as they're going to call DPI on that Come on! The amount of times we've been called with a DPI after getting there once the ball has already arrived has just been insane. First and 10, free yardage for the Ravens after they do not need it. Dobbins breaks one tackle, will pick up six. Well, defense, the only way we're going to make this happen with at least the way that they're letting us play is by getting some turnovers. Second and four, they got trips to the right-hand side. As man coverage does not work there, but the pass is off. They definitely had a couple options. We know Andrews was open. He got just burned, C.J. Gardner-Johnson. It's third and four. As they look for a stop, though, it opens up downfield, but no, it is not a touchdown. I believe that was for Terrace Marshall. Did not get his second foot down in bounds. So it's one of the better ways to end a drive that we've had, obviously not counting the missed field goal, but getting them to only take field goal attempts is an improvement this second half. But it does keep things still difficult for our offense, who's trying to play catch up here. Back down 21 points, just over three quarters left to go as we've got to get rid of that one. The blitz straight through. And then, of course, after it, we try to call a play to defeat the Blitz, and they back up everyone. Only a couple guys on the line here. Let's see if we could find ourselves a shot downfield as they only bring three. Try to find Boston. It was a beautiful throw over the top of Roquan, but he can't hold on to it. So they'll definitely not help us out <laughs> at all. Third and ten. Got to look for the run here. Get by one guy. Get as much as we can. It is fourth and four. Of course, we're going for it. At this point of the game, we can't afford to not try to go for it here, even though we're backed up still at our own 33. Chenault's going to come in motion. We've got some crossing patterns, some stopping routes. See what opens up here for us. Get this one out to Barry, who will get the catch and pick up a couple more as he fights out of bounds. No, unfortunately, we're not in the point of the game where that will actually stop the clock. So it's going to keep moving here. See if we could get something downfield, perhaps. Faust had the step, but it looks like it's overthrown, and I think Dobbs might have been past the line. All right, now it's really just the simple mistakes hurting us in this one. Fumbling the ball, and I don't know if that's technically legal to wrap up the running back in the backfield like that, but... They don't call it, so it's just something we have to deal with. Third and 15 instead. Once again, those just little mistakes coming back to bite us here. Bateman, once again, he has the step. It's put on him this time. He's looking for his second, though. He's bumped out down at the five. So close to getting his second. We'll give him an option here. RPO dialed up, though it opens up again down the middle for Hubbard, who will pick up only a couple. We've got to get back to the line quickly. Not a whole lot of time left in this one. We've got some blockers out in front for Bateman to lose a yard. Need that pass to get to the outside where the blockers are actually set up. Well, that will end up taking us into the fourth where we need at least three touchdowns to tie. And our defense okay, can't give up a single point. So while I'm not saying we're out of luck, it's definitely past crunch time here. We need perfection. Third and goal. Get this over the top of the linebacker, and I don't even know what kind of throw that is. I mean, you have your target. It was just nowhere close. As we have everyone just going to the outside here. It opens up for Dobbs, though he does not read it quickly. Ojabo with the tackle will be a turnover on downs. But really, it just seems like this team just 100% unprepared for the rain. Even though you can check a forecast, you know what's going to happen days in advance, at least most likely. Didn't seem like our coaches did that. So now we really just have to rely on forcing a big play. Second and four. It's a heavy set. 
as they look to go with a stretch to the outside. Quick stop there by St. Juiced. Now we just need one more. Third and four, they got two spread to the right-hand side, tight end and a fullback to the left. As they look to go with a run to the outside, a great stop from Hodgins. They went all run and we adapted. But can the pasture not finally start to give us some good passes? Get us down to the end zone quickly. That is what we are desperate for. And he might need to also just scramble around a little bit as well. Though right now he's barely outrunning the edge rush. Obviously he was injured earlier in this game with some lower back strain. Maybe that's why he's not running very smoothly. But we need some plays here. Or complete a five yard pass. But it looks like that was probably the last straw for him as he heads to the bench and it is Duggan sent out at quarterback for third and 10. Can he be the savior this team needs? Not with a decision to throw there when he had Bateman wide open across the middle. Maybe he just switched the button in his head. I don't know. Fourth and 10. Need to pick up the first down here. We've got options across the middle. A little bit of some play action, gonna force a roll. Can we find the throw coming across? It is picked off by Humphrey, essentially an arm punt. Now we were probably too far away for a field goal there. Maybe in total that's nine points we could have gotten off of field goals. But even with that, we would still be down in this game. It's just simply come down to talent and beating just the conditions. We let the conditions beat us early in this game, put us in a tough spot. And unless we could force those quick turnovers, we might just be out of options in this one. Third and five. It's a weak pistol set as they go with the read option and it is Jackson Lamar with a first down run. Not going to get by Newsome. Good tackle in open field. But that kind of feels like the dagger. Though granted that dagger probably already was put in place. We just kept trying to fight through the pain. Under four minutes left in this one. They go back to the read option. Jackson back to the line. Now, I would love to see what this team could have done against the Ravens with a fully healthy roster. Obviously, everyone wishes that. Everyone has to deal with injuries. We've just been extremely unlucky with them as the other Jackson picks up the first. Now, hopefully we end up having kind of the opposite to last year. A slow start, but a strong ending. Still making the playoffs. That would be the best outcome for us this year as now Dobbins heads to the end zone. That 100% is the dagger. The Ravens go up four possessions, definitely putting this game to bed. Oh, we were just simply outmanned, outclassed in this one. The Ravens, they have so many good players on every single level, both sides of the ball. They were able to deal with the conditions no problem today. Meanwhile, we put ourselves in a big hole early on and we couldn't pull ourselves out of it. But moving forward, we have got to right this ship. Now, I did say there was an improvement in that second half. We only gave up 10 points in that second half. However, we only scored 17 points in total that whole game. We gave up 21 alone in the second quarter and it all came off of just turnover problems for us. Four on the day, most of those came early. There was uh, an interception that came late in that game after it was already signed, sealed, and delivered. So things that we have to improve on and this next game, it would be a great time to do that. We finally get into divisional play in week five. Then we have a game against the Chiefs and then right back against the Buccaneers in week seven. The Buccaneers, they are two and two. They are right above us and the Saints. And I was correct with us losing the Saints and winning. They did jump us. So we now sit at the bottom of the NFC South. The Falcons are four and oh. We've got to turn things around now if we are to see ourselves have a chance at making the playoffs at the end of this season. Already we have lost just about as many games as we did in total last year. Now, unfortunately, in this game, we did suffer another injury, and it was another torn labrum in the backup safety in Jamie Robinson. Now, we are one game away from getting back Bryce Young, so he'll be back for the Chiefs game. So will McCullough. Owe and Wills Jr. will be back for the second Buccaneers game, but we're still missing a lot of guys, 
and I don't think the slider change really helped. The total injuries weren't as impactful in this one. There were still just as many. They weren't just as long lasting. Unfortunately, Jamie Robinson was hit with that long lasting. So what it means now is I think we have to look at what trades we could possibly do to fix this team while also getting guys back healthy. So we have had Mingo just sitting on roster and we have not been using him. And honestly, the rookie in Faust has been just as productive as what Jonathan Mingo has ever been for us. So it's not like we're really missing out with him not being out there. But what are our options to do with Mingo? There's actually no trades coming in for him right now. Which is interesting because we are getting trade offers instead for the corner in Devontae Johnson. So what offers are we getting here? Backup running back. That trade would be not, not even close. A 77 overall cornerback and a 69 running back. No picks. Not very good. A safety that would be depth or another depth running back. So we might have to try to work some things instead. And areas of which I think we could possibly use someone is maybe a new strong safety. There are several options here just sitting on the trade block. There is Enrique Armstead, a star dev, 23-year-old safety. Jordan Battle, solid guy, did his great in the Alabama State-only challenge, though just normal dev. And Pinnock, also a normal dev, though 27. So Enrique Armstead, he's 6'3", 218. Second year, he does not provide much man coverage, though. And at strong, considering we play so much man, I really need someone with some man coverage. And one option that could be potentially really good for us is Johnny McCoy. He's 23 years old, a star dev on the Patriots, and he does have that man coverage. A 75 with 83 zone. He has speed, some tackling, some hit power. He could definitely play some strong. Injury is a little bit of a concern at an 85. So if we did want to make a move here for someone like Johnny McCoy, are they interested in talking at all? They are. And we're looking like it's going to involve a third and later pick. Maybe we slide in a player then, and then that lowers the third maybe to like a player and a fifth. Could be an option. Obviously, right now we have CJ Gardner-Johnson. He's an 85 true overall star dev, but I just... He doesn't seem to be making any big plays for us. So if we could find someone who does make those bigger plays, even if they're lower overall, I am perfectly fine with that. But that's at least an idea of the move I'm looking to make. I need some more impactful players on this team. Too many guys just aren't making plays. So we'll see what the future holds for us before that week eight deadline. Definitely let me know down below if there's someone you think we should target in a trade or Guys, do you think we should be trading away? Definitely open. I will listen to anything and everything because clearly this team has not started off very good. We are one in three. We're very shaken from a lot of injuries, but we've got to turn things up. And next time it'll be against the Buccaneers as we open up divisional play. So do not miss it. Hit that bell icon on the bottom right or scroll down, hit the sub button. They both do the same thing. And definitely make sure you tip that bell icon so you're notified of when these videos go live this series every single monday tuesday thursday and friday plus we have the alabama state only challenge moving into its final season on wednesday we've made the playoffs three times we've yet to get by the divisional round in each of those seasons so it all comes down to the final year will it be fourth times the charm and for us next time will it be the divisional play that is the charm to get us moving back in the right direction and hopefully staying a lot healthier